up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Chuck. And we're speaking the language of bromance with my bro man, sir. Eat bromance, see. With my bro man, see. <laughs> see. <laughs> no, never mind. Richard, I found a brand new gig for you and me, buddy. <gasps> like, new jobs? Yes. Good, because this podcasting thing isn't working. <laughs> so, one, we got to move to Japan. I'm fine with that. I would love to live in Japan. Two, we have to serve cake. Okay. You know what they have, you know what they have in Japan? Giant robots. They do have giant robots. They have, there's the, I want to talk about this story sometime in the future, too, but there's a hotel in Japan that's run just by robots. Oh, my God. That's amazing. The future is now. That's not what we're talking about today. So, we got oh. Japan. Cake and calling ladies princess. How do you feel about that, Richard? Um, well, I'm not a lady. No, you're going to call ladies princess. Oh. You're going to serve ladies cake and call them princess. Are they going to hit me and then sue me? Because I still have some things pending. <laughs> so let me read this little little uh, tidbit from somebody that, that ventured into this, this career that we're going to go to. So this is a lady talking. He said, my handsome butler... And his smart black waistcoat and bow tie greets me at the door. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this is this going to be like a BDSM thing? No, there's no funny business. It's against the rules. No touching. No, t- no, no touching. So, so, so you right now you're you 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 are sucking the fun out of this. <laughs> it's like a strip club. So he greets me at the door. Hello, princess. He softly intones as he as. He manfully leads me to a rose-strewn alcove. 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 Romantic music swells, and I sit down and thumb through the menu, feeling more nervous than I hope is apparent. And how do you manly lead somebody? How do you how do you do that in a like? You said that they he he manly leads me down the hall. How does that happen? With a deep voice, can you boast your chest a little bit? (laughs) This way, madam. No one leads like Gaston. No one walks <laughs> like Gaston. No one turns around and serves you cake like Gaston. <laughs> Did you just watch the new Beauty and the Beast? No, but I don't know if I should. I'm down for it. I love that Disney is like redoing all the uh, old cartoon, like famous cartoons. I still need to watch The Jungle Book. I haven't watched The Jungle Book. Pretty good. I like it. I heard it's good. Everybody said nobody has a disparaging thing to say about it, but I heard it's good. Let's see. So romantic music swells and I sit down and thumb through the menu, feeling more nervous than I hope is apparent. Ooh, shoo shoo. What's it to be? Sipping champagne pain while adorned with a tiara as his blue eyed Adonis awaits on my awaits on me hand and foot. Perhaps we should draw the lacy curtains for privacy and enjoy an intimate TTRTT together. I don't know what that means. TTRTT? Yeah. I don't know. It sounds this dirty. Is, that was a, that's what I, exactly what I was just going to say. This is starting to sound dirtier and dirtier by the second. You sure this isn't? <laughs> no. I mean, it's no touching, but... Huh? Or better yet, I could have my photo taken as he lifts me up in his big, strong arms. The options are enough to bring a flush to the cheeks of even this worldly madam. It sounds like a cheesy romance novel. It does. Like the cover, the covers like some like dude with like long blonde hair and a shirt kind of open a bit. And the book's called like, you know, Summer at Midnight or some stupid <laughs> Summer <at> shit. <laughs> the panties drop at midnight. Yeah. Although they wouldn't say panties because it's somewhat classy on the cover. What would it be? Um, The teardrop. The tear drops at midnight. My 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 summer awakening. Sounds like your uh, memoir from your time at summer camp. Yeah. And then the counselor turned off the lights. <laughs> I did. I thought you said we ran out of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the memories. And that's when we decided to do our own weenie roasting. <laughs> Uh, so Richard, there, there's a, this cafe, it's a butler's cafe in the Tokyo's Trend Center, where it employs young, handsome Western men to basically serve these Japanese women. Okay, so so if this so if this was our gig, so basically we'd be like uh we'd be like waiters. Essentially, yeah. What I imagine is like they say handsome, so I imagine we show up for this, we're like, we're here to be the cake waiters. <laughs> No, they'd totally be into it because we have beards. 
That's true. They, I don't know, they got some, like, I've read through the story a little bit, and there's just some weird stuff with how this goes. All I'm saying, everything I, at most, well, not, yeah, a lot of things that I know about Japanese culture, I learned from the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice, which is regarded as one of the lesser, you know, not as great Bond movies, but that's honestly one of my favorites. I think it's probably because they tried to make Sean Connery look Japanese. Oh. And, yeah. Hey, Richard, knock, knock. Who's there? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> um, But no, I guess, uh, now according to this movie, Japanese girls are very, um, not turned on, but they're very... Like they get they 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 like Western men because Western men grow more hair than Japanese men. But Sean Connery isn't Western. Well, I guess they consider Western just anywhere. Yeah, the Western of, world. Uh, yeah. Well, whenever I think of Western, I think of like the actual New World, not like Scotland. <laughs> so if you show up with a cowboy hat, it's like, oh my god, are those spurs? <laughs> Serve me a cake, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> So with these these butler cafes, the customers are also called princesses and are served by these waiters. So as well as like standard cake and coffee like you would see in a lot of places, sometimes they serve alcoholic drinks as well. Like sake and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. They What's funny is they say that these drinks are rather pricey. So you can have soft drinks or alcoholic drinks, and they start at around 900 yen. I have no clue what that translates to in dollars. 7.99. Okay, okay. But that doesn't seem terrible to me. Like, you go to a bar in the States and order a beer, it's six bucks. Unfortunately. And that has that that speaks that speaks ill of our culture because we're supposed to be we're supposed to be the land of cheap beer. Yeah. Well, and what's funny too is like think about like let's say this is kind of the equivalent of like a strip club here in the States. I've never been, so like I just I just gotta go off what I heard. But okay. I'm pretty sure that like a like rum and coke is in the ballpark of like 1587 at a strip club so i've heard yeah that makes so i've heard <laughs> according to the latest trends in strip club magazine which i casually leaped through <laughs> when i was at the doctors <laughs> so 7.99 for an alcoholic drink didn't seem too bad for me i mean that is starting off but even then that doesn't seem terrible yeah i yeah i could i would agree with you so the owner yuki hirohata that's a that's an awesome last name Hiro Hata. Get it? Japanese Japanese names are awesome. Yeah. They're all sexy. Like Ichiro Suzuki. Yeah. He's a baseball player. Hideo Kojima. Tanahito Iguchi. Like they're all, yeah. Yeah. They all sound like fucking, like badasses in anime. But then you go over there and I'm sure like, I'm sure like Tagarito is like the equivalent of Steve. Probably. We can more like, oh my god, your name's Steve? That's so hot. Rah, 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 yeah. rah. <laughs> so some think Butler's Cafe is a foreigner host club, but it's not. This is Yuki Hirohata. We only have two rules, Richard. She said Richard in here. I don't know why she was talking to you. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm totally listening. So there's two rules. Yeah, so no that's... Touching. Well, don't, ex one? don't exchange personal information with the customers and don't touch the customers. Except, of course, for the lift me up photo. Then we have to touch. Is that like is that like like in Beauty and the Beast where the Beast like picks her up and twirls her around the ballroom? Uh, it looks like what it is is they pick you up kind of like um, across the threshold wedding style. Oh, OK. OK. So that so it's like a fireman's carry. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So imagine Richard, you and I show up here at uh, Yuki Hirahata. And she's like, all right, we got two openings. And there's a bunch of us Westerners that show up. Yeah. Like, we got two rules. No, they'd be like, rule number one, no touching. And be like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> what about singing? Can we sing? <laughs> I have a whole Gaston catalog that, I'm, that I want to try out. So it's interesting that, like, so this lift me up photo that they talk about, it's the only time you can touch them. It costs 1,000 yen. So it's like 10 bucks. So 10 bucks, you get a photo where they they just basically hold you like a dead fish. Yeah, and you smile awkwardly. Like, that's got to be awkward, I would assume. I don't know. I mean, have you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, like, I don't know if, I don't know if this is true of you, but, like, there's been a time or two that I've had to carry a drunk girl out of a bar, not for the purposes of bringing her to, to my place for sex. 
So the only touching you can do, Richard, so you get in here, you know, so they're, they're walking us through this, right? Miss uh, Yuki Hirohata. She's walking us through, like, here, you know, we're in training. So this is, like, your first day of waiting. Yeah, you know, your first day of yeah. waiting camp. Yeah. Orientation's terrible. Like, so we get to sleep with the women, right? No. No, you don't get to sleep with women. Point of order, do I know Japanese? No. Well, yeah, most of these people don't know much Japanese at all. Well, that's a good point, because they're all supposed to be, they're all Western guys. And by Western, I don't mean they're wearing cowboy hats and spurs. <laughs> so I guess, do they consider, like, Russians Western then, too? Like, are they the only East? That seems kind of, I don't know. It seems funny to me. Are you calling them racist? Oh, uh, no, I mean, just maybe a uh, um, geographicalist. <laughs> <laughs> they're geographically racist. <laughs> Um, I think, I think the quote unquote Western world is like North America and Europe. So Russia and that would be considered because that's part of Eurasia, right? Right. So, but for, so she's walking us through this and they have what they call a lift me up photo. So what do you think a lift me up photo is? Maybe, you know, you start giving them like, Hey, you're a pretty, pretty princess. Lift up their spirits. <laughs> it's all about self-esteem. <laughs> But for 1,000 yen, so that's that's about $10. Yeah. So for $10, Richard, that's actually eight eighty eight right now. Eight eighty eight. Okay. you have to lift up one of these Japanese girls and take a picture with them. Okay, here's my question. <laughs> what happens if you drop them? No, not that. This is, this is something I would probably ask at orientation. I'd be like, um, I, have, I have a question. Does this bar cater exclusively to women? Yes, it's just women. Okay, so, like, I don't have to, like, fire... I, there isn't going to be pictures of me on the internet with a, holding a dude in a fireman's carry. No, no, no like, worries Like, oh, there. you're a pretty princess. <laughs> well, maybe. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Western cowboy. <laughs> you're so sweet. There are other services, though. So there's one they call Cinderella Time. I always find it like demeaning some of the names they give. It's like, see, this is all sounded dirty to yeah. me. It's like, oh well, are you ready for Cinderella time? Yeah, yeah. So the Cinderella time, Richard, is where the customers receive some bubbly, so champagne, sweets, a candle, a tiara. You get to give them a tiara, Richard, and a silver bell on a silver platter. Again, I am very glad that this does that. I don't have to do this to a guy. Here's your pretty tiara. <laughs> Ring the bell if you need anything. Ding, 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 ding. Mm. Take off your right. pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no touching. That's the first rule. <laughs> I've paid the extreme cost where touching's allowed. Damn it. Okay, be gentle. <laughs> it's my first time. That's why it cost me so much. That's when you just pull, you just, you just pull a loss in translation then. Just be like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't speak uh, English. <laughs> you want a hot dog? We're out of hot dogs. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know where the bathroom is. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, but I mean, it kind of keeps going up. So for four thousand yen, which again, Richard. So the Cinderella times two thousand yen. So like less than twenty bucks. You okay. can't even get into a strip club for less than twenty bucks. No fake. Okay, so so for eight dollars, you give them a drink. For ten dollars, you hold them like a dead fish, and then you, they take your picture. So now what? So for or yeah, so then for ten ten something, then they get this. Then they get this pretty tiara and all this and all the whatnot. Yeah, for twenty. So for then about 20 yeah, bucks. then they're Princess Minoki. Okay, now for twenty dollars. That's that's the Cinderella times twenty dollars. No, oh, Cinderella times twenty dollars. Okay, yeah. But to jump up to the next level is 4,000 yen, which is about 40 bucks. Okay. I have it here, so... I feel like this is this is starting to get more and more extreme. So for 35 bucks, Richard, basically there's a budding female li linguistist. So basically they say that you start studying English. So you're teaching these broads English. <laughs> what? So you, you can't even speak Japanese, but for 4,000... <laughs> so wait a minute. So, okay, so let me see. let me see if I get this straight. Okay. You're like, hey, okay, so what you say is, that's a good size. 
<laughs> so for so for ten dollars you get a picture taken with them. Twenty dollars you get some champagne and like happy fun time. And for forty dollars you get school. Yeah. So there's a, a so let's see for four thousand budding female linguistics receive a notebook in which they can exchange comments with their chosen butler each time they visit. So basically you can keep track of all the times you come and visit these people. All so you get a comment book for all the times that they come and visit you yes well they get a comp so they get to write in this comment book like to you i don't know if they write oh, it okay in japanese and somebody converts it so that you can be able to read it well and, that's what i would think would happen and they kind of learn english that way okay so it's basically like those prostitutes that retired a couple of years ago but this is like a little bit more of a pg i feel version. like i feel like i would need a censor you know be like tell her she has a nice rack um you have very pretty hair <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I said. That's what I wrote. And so that's what she's going to understand. Uh, you do know there's Yakuza here, right? <laughs> no. Oh, that, what if that is, what if it's run by the Yakuza? What if the Yakuza like kidnaps us and takes us there? It's like, you're going to serve women cake. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like hostile, but instead they're like, serve them cake. <laughs> that's like the best, like bro comedy movie ever. <laughs> You get captured. So wait a minute. So we'll get. So we would get kidnapped, thrown to. So so we're so we're walking. Say we're in. You know we're in sunny California. We're walking down the beach and we're holding hands. Well, we're like, hey, we're gonna do this live podcast out in California, right? Right. It's our big break, Richard. We're all excited. Yeah. We're going on a little stroll, like to clear our heads before the show. Yeah. We're walking down the beach. And we're holding hands. We see a sushi a bar. We're like, hey, let's go to the sushi bar. We'll have some sake. Yeah. And we're, we're looking at the bartender. We're like, hey, you got a lot of interesting tattoos. Yep. And then thunk on the back of the head. And then where do we wake up, Sean? In a shipping container. <laughs> That's where we're going to wake up. Richard, Richard, I can't feel my hands. It's because you were sitting on them, Sean. Oh, thank God. I thought they cut them off. <laughs> How would I ever masturbate without my hands? <laughs> Wait a second. I can't feel my hands. Sean, are you giving yourself the stranger right now? No. Thank God it's pitch dark in this shipping container. <laughs> Halfway through, opens up and we're just staring at each other. Don't open the door, <laughs> don't open the door. Occupied. <laughs> uh, so they take us out and we're like, oh my God. And, you know, Of course, you would freak out at that point, right? Yeah, because, well, I think I'd freak out the moment I woke up in a shipping container. I'm like, wait a minute. This is what people do to come here. Where are we going? <laughs> they uh, So they take us out and like, I, my first thought would be they got the wrong guys, right? Like they thought we were somebody else because you're wearing your yeah. fedora hat. So like, oh my God, these guys must be famous. Yeah. And they're probably like, oh, those white people, they all look alike. That's true. We do. And we show up and they like bring us in. They sit us down at this table in this like sketchy looking like back room. Yeah. And then they hold up tuxes, and they're like, put this on. <laughs> and then we're like, um, what? You have to look presentable for Mr. Yakuza. Okay. Comes in. He's, he only speaks Japanese. Like, Richard, Richard, if I die, you tell him I didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, so is somebody going to translate? And then somebody walks over and like, okay, tell him he has a nice rap. <laughs> You have beautiful hair. It's not what I said. Well, that's what I told him. Well, trust me, that's what you want to. That's what you want to tell him. And he does. He says something in Japanese, and the translator says, "We have a job for you." It's like we're not assassins. We can't do anything. Oh God, this is how action movies start. Are we gonna learn how to shoot guns? <laughs> <gasps> do we get swords? <laughs> Sean, are you Jason Bourne? No, <laughs> I'm not Jason Bourne. <laughs> you know, I've seen those Bourne movies, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't shit himself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he didn't give himself a stranger in the back of a truck either. So say, like, how do you guys feel about cake? Oh, I like cake. Is that, is that a metaphor? No, the sweets, dumbasses. Oh, I, I like cake. White or chocolate? White cake. How do you how do you feel about princesses? I want to be a pretty princess. <laughs> not with the load you just shat in those <laughs> pants, you're not. Uh, and that's where we learn that we're going to be the next butlers. Yeah, honestly, though, like, I mean, for, like, I would do that. That's not a bad gig. Because, I mean, think about it, like. Besides it not, besides not making much money, 
it seems like it's rather cheap. Well, I'm saying it's not like number one, not not that bad a job. Like you know, you serve a girl champagne and you say some nice things to her in English, and she has no clue what the fuck you're saying. As long as you do it in like a nice tone of voice and a sweet smile, like yeah. you'd be like, you know, I hate I. I absolutely despise anime. I think your face looks like it was run over by an 18-wheeler truck. And then she's like, <laughs> shish you. <laughs> Do you know Japanese? Uh, or is that what no. you've learned from anime no. Adult Swim TV shows? No. I didn't watch. I wasn't. I am not a big anime fan, and I feel like I'm going to catch flack for that. Well, you've always said like it takes a special kind of geek, or a it takes a kind special of kind of geek, and and that's not that's not disparaging of people that like anime. It's just that people that watch a lot of anime and people that are really into anime, you you know who they are. They let you know who they are, and I've just never. I mean, not, that's not to say that I think it's all garbage. I mean, I've I've watched I've watched some anime, and I like some. It's just that on the whole, it's never completely appealed to me. I've 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 been a bigger fan of stuff that has been more tailored to Western audiences. You got you know films like Akira and Ghost in the Shell and 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 shows you know other and you know I mean I like those Vampire Hunter D. I really really I really really enjoyed. I'm a lot I'm I'm that way with a lot of Japanese stuff. Like I used to play a lot of not a lot but I used to play a couple um, Japanese RPGs for you know on video games but honestly the only ones that really really appealed to me were the ones that kind of appealed to western audiences in general final fantasy 7 um stuff that was converted over yeah i mean well yeah obviously i'm not i'm not playing a game that's in the original <laughs> japanese i couldn't do it we subtitled you might be able to make it no i mean they put the, like they port when they port them over to english like i've i've been i've been a fan of some of an okay amount of of Japanese RPGs. Sui Koden was was a really good game. Wild Arms was a good game. Um, a couple others I can't think of. Persona was really good. They just came out with uh, they just released a Persona Five that was really good. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent, but well, Richard, as we're we're getting kidnapped by the accuser and getting put into this lifestyle, like we need to know what qualities make for a good butler, right? Because if we're gonna be in this, we gotta do a good job. Because we don't do anything that fast. Yeah. So they in this uh, article from it's from JapanTimes.co is where this article comes from. This is from 2008, so this has been out there a while. Yeah. But so they have three guys that they talk to that do this, and Hirohata talks about what she sees. So this is the this is our madame who's going to put us in shape. She's going to tell us what we need to do. The first impact is everything for her. She says. Even okay. if he is good looking, which both of us are not good looking, so we've already failed there. <laughs> right. They're like, okay, what's step two? Yeah. Where I'm, <laughs> I, can, I can I can make things up on the later steps. What else you got? <laughs> so you gotta be good looking. If he doesn't have any charisma, doesn't want to hire him. I don't know if I have. Oh. Do you think I have charisma? Um. No. I think. <laughs> 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 I think that. Um. Yeah, I would say so. I think I think charisma is you know like. Your ge- um, for me, definition of charisma is general likability. Oh, mine would be high. Everybody loves me. Do they? I think so, for the most part. I think I've only had like one teacher in high school that hated my guts for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, but were you a brown nosing kid? No, not really. Okay. I just okay. wasn't a bad kid. I mean, you know, like I wasn't a bad kid at all. Of course you weren't. I you didn't were the- want to rock the boat. No. That's you. Rock the boat. Don't tip the boat over. Rock the boat. And then the teachers are like, oh, my God, he knows so much. <laughs> Look at even his song choices are great. <laughs> Gold sticker. <laughs> Laura, he's 18 years old. What's he wanting stickers for? Laura, I tell you, if he keeps doing this, he's going to be serving cake to Japanese women. Or or he's going to want cake served to him by American <laughs> men. <laughs> So, let's see. Uh, she looks for inner beauty, brightness, and honesty, which I think we excel in all three of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's just, you know, be a generally nice person and you don't, don't, rule one, don't be a dick. Rule two, be able to pick up a Japanese woman. Yeah. Which is fairly easy. Have you ever seen them? They're small. They're, they're all small and frail. I've never seen a Japanese woman 
that looks like she weighs more than 120 pounds. You could probably Google fat Japanese woman and probably get something. Probably, but... <laughs> Incognito's broke, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but then again, you got to think, like, their definition of fat and our definition of fat are probably two different things. Like, Google fat Japanese woman and then Google fat American woman and tell me you wouldn't see a huge difference. And I mean that literally, a huge difference in your results. All right, so they met with three of Hirohata's butlers. All of them were handsome. So you had Brandon Lee from America, who had anime-inspired hair. You had Crispin Deverill, which sounds like a completely fake name. I was going to say, are these, 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 all, these sound made up. Yeah. These are made-up names. So now we have to figure out what our names would be. Uh, I'm Richard. <laughs> I'm Sean. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, wait. I want to be um, Prince... Prince Kaiju. That's that's good, right? Like Godzilla, you know, Kaiju. That go that goes over great here, right? Oh no. There goes Tokyo. <laughs> go go Prince Richard. <laughs> uh Crispin Deverill is from Australia. Prince Crisp. Do they refer to themselves as princes? No, they are Since not. Since it's a princess bar. Like they're the princes that no, they're just servants. So that's all their job is. It's basically to wait on these ladies' hand and feet. Oh, okay. Well, then I go with a butler name if I'm if I'm if I'm supposed to be a butler. <laughs> I'm Ask Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I call myself like Reginald. <laughs> That'd be my name. Or Alfred. Yeah, Alfred. There you go. Yeah. Well, since you picked that out of the hat, then you can you can be Alfred and I'll be Reginald. I want to be I, I want to be Jeeves. I think Jeeves is a good one. Okay, be re, be Jeeves. I'm be Jeeves. Jeeves and I'll be Alfred. I'll be Alfred Al Jeeves. AJ. Alfred Jeeves. Call me AJ. Like, oh, American has so many crazy names. <laughs> this is what we we'd have to try to not have awkward conversations. I guess a lot of times these women are scared to talk. Well, yeah, because they live in a very uh, male centric culture. Women are usually, uh, uh, from a society standpoint, I think, I think women are, and I don't know this. So, I mean, maybe I'm disparaging the whole culture, but I, I, I was under the impression that women are not, um, encouraged to have a lot of independence. I mean, it is, I've heard that they have like used underwear bending machines. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. No, that's true. That's a thing. I had never gotten that. Ah, who knows? I think there's places. I think there's places you can order that shit off the internet. Whether or not it's actually true, who the fuck knows? Well, I'm sure there's all those webcam and like Twitter porn stars that'll be like, "Hey, yeah, yeah. for a twenty five dollar Amazon gift card, I'll give you my underwear." Right. There's a whole. There's a whole storyline of it. And Orange is the new black. I have not seen that yet. That's on my list. It's on your list. Oh, that dude. you're slowly working through. Thank God he finally got Netflix. Oh, uh, let's see. So some of our princesses don't really look twice at me, says Lee modestly. So like some of the girls, like, oh, man, how about like there's five guys like now we're they went from three to five. Yeah. So now we have to vie for now we have to vie for the attention. This is like Bunny Ranch, but for dudes with cake. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. And, and, and here's the problem. The problem is, is that now I have to compete with Crispin from Australia, who probably looks like a probably looks like fucking uh. Like Chris Helmsworth. Yeah, because he surfs all the time. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with it? Like, how am I supposed to compete with this? I want to fuck this man. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to serve me cake. Yeah. And call me a princess. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want out of this world right now. Chris, but here's all my tips. And I'm supposed to I'm supposed to compete with this guy for fucking... Do they get tips? I would I guess imagine. That's... Well, I don't know. Tipping's, I think tipping's more of an American culture, so probably not. They probably oh, just get yeah, salary. that's true. Tipping is a very American thing. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, you got to buy for these. And uh, before starting the company, Hirohata did some research asking women how they felt about foreign men. And she was quoted as saying, they said that foreign men have the ability to treat women well, and their compliments sound nice. But on the other hand, they are often too casual and too friendly, so sometimes women are scared to chat with them. So it's like, wait a minute, you're being nice to me as a man. What do you want? Yeah. Oh, look, cake. No, 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 no. Which, nom, nom, which nom. to be, f I mean, to be fair, they should be nervous. There, uh, I was recently listening to a podcast. I was talking about a Scarlett Johansson movie where they actually uh, like filmed um, real like footage of like strangers, like her flirting with them. 
uh-huh. and like it was like kind of uglier guys. So it'd be like Scarlett Johansson coming up to us and be like, "Hey, you want to come back to my house?" And all of them were like, "Uh, is this a trap? Like, what's going on here? Why are you flirting <laughs> this, with me?" This doesn't normally happen, so I assume the worst. I'm either in a porn or a horror movie, and the odds are it's a horror movie. Yeah, our... Oh, look at this! <laughs> oh, she has cake. <laughs> Oh, I feel sleepy. And then you wake up missing an arm and your yep. kidneys. And my kid, both kidneys? Probably. That'd be a good way to go, though. It's kind of like the um, Rob Zombie movie, um, the De- not The Devil's Rejects. Yeah, The Devil's Rejects with, uh, oh, what was the zombie's wife's name in that movie? Baby. Yeah, that'd be a good way to go. But I don't think she slept with him. I think she just stabbed him in the face. Yeah, but she laughed when she did it, so you feel loved. <laughs> stab, <laughs> stab. She does it because she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> or because this gives her amusement. Yeah, that's true. Why do you take these things from me? <laughs> I, I guess, you know, I just, I mean, I'm just breaking into the real, man. <laughs> and, and the real is, is that she, uh, she's stabbing you in the face because she likes stabbing people in the face. <laughs> So, so I'm, so I'm hired by this company. Uh, oh, so, so what I was going to say is like, this isn't like that bad a gig because number one, <clears throat> like I'm in a foreign, like I'm in, I'm in Japan. Is this bar, is this place in Tokyo? Yeah, it's in Tokyo. It's like in like a big travel center too. Right. So I'm hanging out in Tokyo. Like in my off time, I can go to, I can go to like robot bar and, or I can go see the robot fights and. Like Tokyo looks fucking amazing. Go get go to the vending machines and get some used underwear. Right, you get drunk. You go to the vending machine. You get a pair of underwear. Have you ever had sake? Yes, sake's good. Of course, I probably have the not American. Big version. on it. I think it's not bad. It's like sweet. It's like a hot wine, basically. Right, is the way I've always been sold what it is. I no, it tastes more like it tastes more like vodka to me. That I mean, I mean to me, that's what it tasted like to me. Like I drank it, and it was it was hot. Like I ordered it hot and um and yeah, it just it tasted more like vodka to me than uh than like wine. Had more of a bite. I mean, I don't know, like I mean, just my opinion. I've never been big on it. But the thing is is that I was a I always liked vodka. But for some reason Sanki no it's just kinda like, eh, take it or leave it. Well, how are you gonna survive in Japan then? Because then that that's that is pretty big in Japan, or is there other things that they have beer. They have beer in Japan. I could drink that. Do they have rum cake? I don't know. They have regular rum. cake, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, Lee. Misaki cake. <laughs> so Lee, the guy from America, he, he was, I guess, like the protege. And so he was trying to learn more social skills and um, how to approach these group of strangers and start conversations with them. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the, the lady that owns this place, the Mama-san, uh, was kind of teaching them more from a Japanese perspective. But okay. the guy from... Australia, I guess, was a little bit more flirtatious. So he was kind of throwing it out there. So you'd be, all three of us would be up there. Well, yeah, probably because he looks like a fucking Greek god chiseled out of marble. He's like, I'm all wow, these ladies. Just you watch, mate. Walks, like, th- yeah, throws open the doors, be like, who won't sh- cake on the Bobby? And they're <laughs> like, ah, and they all run out. <laughs> I don't know what you say, but I go sleep with you. <laughs> Then we're just sitting back like, how does he fucking do it? I mean, there's no ocean anywhere close by with waves. He can't surf. How does he keep that body? What do you mean there's no ocean close by? There's it's no an island. There's no surf there, though, is there? Like, I don't, I've never heard of, like, Japanese surfing being epitome of surfing. I'm not saying it's the epitome of surfing, but I'm sure there's something. It's an island. Well, I know that, but I don't, I don't ever really think of, like, there being good waves there. And it's a little bit chilly a lot, too, isn't it? Well, yeah, it gets cold. Like, I don't think they have, like, beach life. At least I never associate. No, I, no, probably not, because, I mean, it's not like you hear a lot about beach life in Washington State. Yeah, so I guess that's what I associate. It's like a Washington State. Like, there's an ocean, but nobody's really going to the ocean to swim. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. But I guess surfers will surf in anything. I mean, there'll be a shark attack, and they'll be out there that same day. Be like, well, it wasn't me. I'll be okay. God, Tokyo looks fucking amazing, though. <laughs> I really, I would love to just visit Tokyo and get served. I was gonna say and get served cake. So I guess one of the guys' models is be selfish, enjoy life, because they're supposed to not be very like you're not supposed to give them personal information. You're not supposed to like hook up or anything like that. Sure, of course. But apparently, most of the clientele are single, are young single female office workers. 
Huh. And okay. apparently this place can seat 32 people, and they usually serve up to 75 customers a day. That's crazy. So, um, but I mean, I mean, it kind of makes it makes sense in a way because think about it, you know, I mean, it's like I said before, I I've gotten the impression that it's a very male centric culture, and so women in general are kind of put on the back burner. So, you, like a woman that's single, working, like has some extra cash, like of course she wants to go someplace and get you know, treated with, at the very least, get treated with some respect, not even necessarily, you know, trying to find somebody to hook up with, just somebody that throws a few kind words their way. Well, they don't even, I wonder if they even understand the words is my question, because, I mean, do they speak English? Yeah, somebody that gets a, yeah, so a, women that are just looking for a kind sentiment. And what's really kind of interesting, so, like, the guy, the Australian guys just talked about, like, when the elevator door closed, oh, so one of his, like, weird situations now, I'm not sure what the elevator door closed means. So, do you like take these women somewhere private? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I don't know how I'd handle that situation being in a private room with a girl. I've only been, that's only happened like twice. Both times it was with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I guess apparently, like, he's had women say that they love him. Of course he did. The American guy says he was a little bit more secretive when they asked this question. He says, What happens at the Butler Cafe stays at the Butler Cafe? Oh, look at Whoa. him throwing out a little tease. So I wonder if this really is just like a, a way for like male prostitution in Tokyo. I don't think so, because I mean, you know, I used to think that I used to think that that American culture was a very sexually repressed culture. Like we like we I would say that there's a large part of us that view sex in a very despair not disparaging way but in a very like oh that's you know it's from our puritanical roots it's like oh sex that's you know that's naughty business but then you look at a country like japan and i would say that they are a very sexually repressed culture which is funny i yeah oh yeah because i'm 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 pretty sure because because they have game shows me, where like a gay guy tries to get a straight guy off in under 20 minutes well that's what well that's what i was gonna say that you know, you look at, I mean, when when a culture feel is in general very sexually repressed, then it comes out in weird ways, like tentacle porn, or you know, or whatever. I would say, I would say that Japan, despite despite the weird things that you see on the internet about it, I would say that Japan, in general, would be a fairly sexually repressed culture, very traditional. Uh, in, in their in roles. Well, it's probably more private, but that's probably. I mean, there's a, there's there's Japan has a very different culture from the things I've seen in movies and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'd love to fucking visit though. Uh, let's see. So the thing that Lee was talking. This is kind of goes, I guess, to where you're talking about. So apparently, one of the the customers that he has that visited often wrote a. It's Y A O I a Yayo Yayoi, uh huh, Yawai cartoon. Okay. So Richard, if you had to guess, what what do you think this this kind of cartoon would be? I I honestly couldn't even fathom a guess. You're asking me to guess what a Japanese cartoon <laughs> would be like. I don't even know. I, I let's count the possibilities here, shall we? So apparently, I guess in Japan, there's a big thing of like like so like in our culture, lesbian porn is like big for yeah. men. So apparently yeah. in Japan, homosexual men porn is a huge thing. That's like big for female audiences. Yeah. Also with with with. Um, with the men, they usually look fairly feminine. In those kind of cartoons? Yeah, yeah. So I guess this lady drew him in one of these situations. And she's like, so then you and the other butler start to kiss and <laughs> feed each other cake. Yeah. And then she's like, I have $50. Make it happen. <laughs> and in the last frame, it's like, and then you look at me and say, was that to your delight, princess? <laughs> You know what? Like we're sitting here and we're and we're, you know, we're disparaging it and throwing jokes at it. But I bet, honestly, I bet it's so much more innocent and mundane. Yeah. I'm sure it's just like, here's a piece of cake. Here's something to drink. Anything else I can get for you, princess? Yeah. I'm sure like that's a majority of what's going on. Probably. Because like you said, the extent of the touching is, oh, let me hold you in my arms and we'll take a and take a picture. Let me lift you up and try not to strain. Right. Well, all the prices seem super cheap for a lot of that stuff, too. So I don't know, like maybe like 98 percent, 95 percent of it's all innocent. 
But then there's the 5% dirty stuff that happens in the Cinderella room. <laughs> there will be no sex in the Cinderella <laughs> room. No sex in the Cinderella room. The the Lee guy talks about, like, I'm afraid I can't really tell my parents about it. So he, like, he can't really tell them all the strange stuff that goes on there. But, like, you look at some of these guys, and they are not very attractive dudes. Like, we're on par with these guys, in my so opinion. You're, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're just lifting. One dude does have the chick lift up pretty high, like a shoulder length. Like, it's just not at his waist. He's got it, like, all the way up. But his hand's a little bit close to some naughty bits. But I'm saying, like, the women in those photos, are, I would say, are probably generally small. Uh, the one in this one isn't, like, she's, like, a petite girl, yeah. That's my point. Like, I could lift a, I could lift a petite girl. Well, I guess if you're doing it every day, like, they might start you out with, like, the, the very small. Like, like you do girls. weight training. Yeah. That's what we do at nights. We we practice lifting like bags. So of it is. So it is like the bunny ranch on our off time. We're doing weight training yeah. and we'll have cake serving races. <laughs> I wonder if they have to make the cake. Could you imagine? That'd be that'd actually be kind of bad. It's like all day you're serving cake and all night. Uh, what's her face? Hirohata. Yeah. Hirohata's like, you make cake now. Oh, I don't want to make the cake. I want to sleep. <laughs> you will no sleep. sleep. You sleep when make cake. <laughs> you sleep when no more cake is left on this earth. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, mm. like I want to go home, and that's when the yakuza comes back in. Like, nope. <laughs> yep. Thunk. You want to go back in the shipping container? Oh God, no! <laughs> I remember what happened in the shipping container. If you go back in there, we take you to Bangkok, and you want to guess what they serve there? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's your man cake. Oh, I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound delicious. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> There's all sorts of themed kind of bars in Japan, though. So I think this is just like one more on top of the pile. You know what I mean? What other what what other kind of theme bars are there? Uh, I don't know. This is the only one I found, but this is the only one I was really searching for. Oh, here you go. Theme restaurant and bars in Tokyo. So this is just Tokyo. Oh, come on, Sean. First one, you know what it is? You know what the first one is on this list? Ninja Bar. <gasps> you go in and you can't see anybody. Nobody's there. <laughs> <laughs> Service here sucks. The ninja-themed uh, Izakia in present-day Tokyo just to experience dining inside a ninja mansion. <gasps> a ninja mansion! What, what the hell is a ninja mansion? Uh, complete with the perfect Japanese ninja era atmosphere. The restaurant's interior involve cave-like passageways, bridges, ponds, and gardens. Enjoy not only their menu and alcoholic beverages, but also the hospitality and good customer service of their waiters dressed as ninjas. Well, what's a... See, that's the thing, too. It's like, it'd be like medieval times where it's not historically accurate at all. Oh, my God, Sean! But they come out of everywhere! Like... Okay, so so this thing I'm I'm looking at, there's like a like it's people sitting at a booth and you're like, Oh, where's our waiter at? And all of a sudden like like a wall panel slides from behind <laughs> from behind them and then ninja shows up and he's like, Take your order and you're like, Jesus <laughs> Do you want the cake? <laughs> Try the ninja chocolate, it's delicious. Oh, come on. Every customer should feel be the uh, feet. Their signature ninja inspired courses, which include shuriken star blades, grissini, chicken fritter ninja style. I have no idea what that is. They also have limited courses, vegetarian course. Oh, come on. That looks awesome. Ninja bar. What would it take to get into the ninja bar? <laughs> Can we like after serving cake for a few years, then it's like, hey, now we're. Can we well, now? We'll now we'll go and try and apply at the ninja bar. <laughs> but they wouldn't want any westerns there because it wouldn't be authentic enough. How would they know? We're all covered up. We look. We look like ninjas. <laughs> They'd be like, "Well, we did like that Chris Farley American Ninja movie, so maybe <laughs> you guys could be in here." Oh, and it's all hidden. You walk into a room. It just looks like a plain room, and that's supposed to be like the entrance to the restaurant. And then you don't know how to get in, and all of a sudden, like one of the walls move. So, this sounds like this does sound like the movie Hostel. Oh, that was amazing! It's like an escape room, but you're trying to survive and eat. Yeah, you're trying to you're, you survive by earning your food. So there you go. So after so after we serve cake to pretty princesses for two years, then we go apply at the ninja bar. 
So do you think something like the the cake place would work here in the states? Do you think like women like would women here want like British men serving them like tea and crumpets, like a tea and no. crumpet bar? No. Why not? No. I think I I think two things. I think number one, I think that it wouldn't go it wouldn't go that well here because I think that most I think that to an American audience it would seem hokey. It would seem hokey and gimmicky, and so not a lot of people would be down for it. Like, could like do you like how many adult women do you know that would go to this kind of place by themselves? I don't know any. Okay, right, let's start, let's let's get more basic. How many adult women do you know? Two, <laughs> my mom and my wife. <laughs> uh, and okay, oh, and the second thing, the second issue i'd have or the second problem that i would foresee is this is basically like one step away from becoming a male strip club and so i you you could totally see the owner of this princess bar just being like yeah let's just let's just make it a male strip club yeah just dance with the cake you know yeah dance with the cake and then they slip they slip 20s in your in your in your butler outfit what was your butler name uh what was it? Reginald. Like, all right, guys. Reginald Barrington the third. Hirohacha is like, all right, guys. I, I, so we're just gonna take clothes off. Like, we're not even gonna we're gonna hide it now. So everybody, take off your yeah. clothes. Reginald, Alfred, you guys gotta go. <laughs> there is no ninja bar that can hide that ugliness. Don't worry, Crispin will pick up your tables. <laughs> Of course he will, son of a bitch. Literally, he will pick up your tables. <laughs> that Crispin is such a dick. Hate that guy. Hate him so much. Well, uh, Richard, so we, we, we've, I think we found a new career choice for us, potentially, until they make it a male strip club. I could totally do this. I mean, like, I would totally be down for this because, like I said, number one, it's a, it's a job that I think... I would be uniquely suited for in that environment because obviously not a lot of American men living in Tokyo. Number two, I would get to like hang out in Tokyo. So like I get off work and then I go to the ninja bar. I'd be curious what the, like the mean South. So I've always thought about this. Like what would it take for you to actually move and become a citizen of a different country? So if somebody contacts you and says, hey, you know, you're going to make X number of dollars here doing this job. Like, would, would this be the kind of job if you didn't have a family, of course, that would you be like, yeah, I'll do that. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I totally would. Because, I mean, I don't think that I mean, obviously, I do not have the uh, looks or talent to be a stripper. Oh, so don't sell I, yourself short. I've seen you oh, in heels. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't have the I don't have the the looks or the skill to, to pull off being a stripper, but. I think that something like this, I could totally do. I could serve cake and call a woman princess. I do it right? already. Yeah, I do. With a smile on my face, sweetie. <laughs> Where's my cake? Coming, princess. <laughs> uh, all right, Richard. Well, I guess as we're kind of bringing this to a close, what Richard's closing thoughts do you have for this amazing cake-filled episode? <sighs> You know what? It takes different strokes to move the world. And you might like to, I think that we all like to build our own ivory towers and sit in them and look down on others, you know, and be like, you know, what kind of weirdo would want to sit in a bar and be called princess and be served cake? But you know what? Some people were, <laughs> some people would be like, why would I want to sit in a bar surrounded by a bunch of women stuffing dollar bills down the dude's pants? So that's why I guess that's my point. It takes different strokes to move the world, and we shouldn't judge people based on their kinks. I can that's buy it. In the, yeah. There you go. All right. Well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website. We're at languagebroance.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languagebro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languagebroance.com. Check out the LLB Army intelligence reports. Like us on Facebook. Go out and recruit somebody for the LLB Army by getting someone you know to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or Stitcher. <sighs> And also, don't forget to leave a, a review when you're on iTunes, because we love reviews. And reviews are also so, so, so helpful. They let us know people are listening, and it kind of help out a little bit to kind of boost our morale. 
It's like it's like serving us cake and calling us princess is what happens when you leave a review. Well, I'm not expecting people to serve me cake and call me princess in an iTunes review. I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> and I, I would totally love all of you for that. But I'm not asking for that. Also, don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. The best podcast site on the internet. That serves us cake and calls us princess. Where you can get all the ear cake you can devour. We put it in our contract. We're like, <laughs> we want cake. Call us princess. And if you want to help Richard and I get to Japan to take up this career, uh, drop a little money in our Patreon jar by going to www.patreon.com slash language of bromance. Or knock us out and throw us in a shipping container. Ooh. Actually, you know what? Throw us in separate shipping containers. Because <laughs> I don't think I'd like what would happen if we were in the same one. Thump, 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 thump. Richard, <laughs> guess what I'm doing? <laughs> Why isn't this one soundproof? <laughs> All right. Was well, there anything else for a closer out? No, 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 no. Let's let's end on that. <laughs> <laughs> With that visual. All right, well, that's all the bro show for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the cake beaver. Beaver cake. The princess beaver. Princess beaver cake. <laughs> here's your cake, princess beaver. <laughs> or here's your, here's your beaver, princess. <laughs> yeah, I made it dirty. <laughs> Caverns and Comedians is a real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast featuring Toronto comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons. We roll the dice, but we edit that out to just give you the nice role playing experience. Featuring acts of heroism. I've got his wallet. I mean, I, I didn't mean to kill him, but he was bad, right? We're pretty sure. Do I have to heal you? I don't want to. Can't you just die? Ooh, a dungeon master! My safe word is potato! Stumbling towards goodness one roll at a time. Caverns and Comedians can be found on iTunes, Google Play, or kicksandgigglesentertainment.com.